Hey everyone, I'm the Aussie IT Contractor and thanks for joining. I was recently asked in the comment section of one of my videos about how contractors are treated by banks and thanks Ashwin, that is a great question and it led me to think about how contractors are treated in general. My previous contracting videos concentrated more on the mechanics of being a contractor so this time I'm reflecting on how I've been treated as a contractor. I must admit this question took a lot longer to answer than I expected. Generalising 20 years of experience into a short video is really tricky and it depended on my mood. If I was in a happy spot then I would think about how well contractors are treated and if I was having a down day I'd think about how badly they're treated. So I'm trying to give a balanced opinion on a range of topics on how different groups of people treat contractors and I hope you find this fun and informative. So how do contractors treat contractors? Well, the short answer is pretty well. I think that contractors tend to find each other in companies because you've got similar experiences and similar concerns and similar issues and contractors come together. It's like at a party, if there's a group of people that like sport, they'll find each other. If there's a group of people that like movies, they'll find each other. In a work environment, the contractors tend to find each other. And from my experience, I think it's important that contractors do find each other when working for the same company. As an analogy, if you're a visitor to a new town or a new country and you meet someone and they complain about how expensive it is to live there or the traffic's bad or the public transport's unreliable, that's okay for them to say it. But as a visitor, you really can't badmouth their country or their city because it just sounds mean and petty. So when you're a contractor, you've got a lot of experience of different places, different companies, some things are better, some things are worse. You need a safe place where you can have a chat to someone else about how the company you're currently working for is good or bad or different, because sometimes when you're talking to a permie about that, they can take offence and it's taken the wrong way. So I think it's really important to speak with other contractors, and I think that contractors do provide a really great support network. Okay, so managers and permie co-workers. And this one had me stumped for a while until I realised it actually depends on how your manager and co-worker treats people in general. So if you've got a manager that's a good people leader, they will treat you the same as any employee that they have, regardless of whether they're permanent or contractor. I tend to find them helpful and understanding. They know that you're new to the organisation. They know that you've got different experience. They make use of your varied experience that you've had in other organisations. You know, they're not scared of it. And they're curious about where you've worked and what you've done. The opposite side of that is if you come across a toxic manager or toxic co-worker and they're going to be toxic to everyone and the fact that they pick you out because you're a contractor is not because contracting is a bad thing it's just to be that's what they've found to pick on you about so good people will treat you well toxic people will be toxic so when it comes to companies i.e your clients again it's a similar proposition if they treat their staff well in general then they'll treat their contractors well in general they will tend to value the skills and experience that a contract will bring because you'll tend to have a greater variety of experience than a permanent employee would have. It doesn't feel like poaching to them as well because you've finished off your last contract, you're coming in, they're not stealing someone away from a competitor. So it doesn't feel like they're stealing someone and they're not questioning your loyalty for joining them. And they generally will look after you like they'll look after a permie. The downside is that companies, because they hire you as a contractor, will ultimately see you as disposable. Now, that's just the nature of the contract. All contracts come to an end. So if they're looking at they have to downsize or they're restructuring or there's a big change coming or whatever happens and they need to reduce the headcount, the contractor is the obvious person to look at first. So that's one of the downsides. But I don't think it's a malicious thing. It's like, who do we look after? The permie or the contractor? Unfortunately, they're looking after the permie. It's probably a good thing for the company, a good thing for the permie. Maybe not so good for the contractor. Recruitment agencies do get bad rap from contractors, which I don't think is justified. I mean, contractors can feel like they're just a commodity, but if you put yourself in the recruitment agent's shoes, you start to understand what's going on and you don't really take offence to it. If you look at it from their perspective, as I said, they are looking for the candidate that best meets the client's criteria because they're not the only agent trying to place someone. If they've got the best client, the best fit, they're going to get you into that company. Contractors are a fantastic income stream for them. When they place a permie, they get a once-off payment based on that permie salary. For a contractor, they get an ongoing payment for as long as you're there. So contractors are a great per, you know, income stream for them compared to placing a permanent. I've always found that they're very supportive through the whole interview and onboarding process. They'll give you as much information as they can about 
the company, the position, the hiring manager, things that they know that the company is looking for, some tips about the interviews. They're fantastic for that. Once you get onboarded and their income stream is set, they're looking at the next client, the next placement that they've got to make. So I tend to find that they will ghost you after the first month into the role, but do you really need any babysitting after that point? Okay, so the tax man. Now, let's preface this with the usual disclaimers. I mean, you come into a YouTube video, don't expect to have a qualified opinion on this, but in my experience, the tax man treats the contract the same as any other employee. If you pay as you go and you have your payments forwarded to the tax department by your agency, your tax return will look no different to a permi. If you've got a proprietary limited setup, then you would submit your company returns and your personal returns just like you would for any small business. So really, there's not a lot of difference. You might get caught up in the 80-20 rule. You need to talk to an accountant around how your income is treated by the tax department. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so here we are. How do banks treat contractors? From personal experience, it's really not a lot different from when I was a permi. They offered me a standard home loan. I didn't have to worry about going with the low doc, no doc, liar loans, as they call it. Um, really, all I was asked for is to provide my previous two years personal tax return summaries uh, when I applied for a loan and when I went back for uh, an increased amount, they just wanted my previous two pay slips. And in fact, dealing with the bank was probably easier than the first loan I took out, which was through a mortgage broker. The broker seemed to have more questions about me being a contractor than the banks did. So really, as long as you've got your um, income tax returns up to date, you shouldn't have any problems with banking whatsoever. So a brief side note about pay slips. Um, as a contractor, if you're PAYG through your agency, they'll provide pay slips, so that's no real problem. And if you're contracting through your own private company, you can actually generate your own pay slips from the company to yourself, just get them signed off by your accountant. I've never had a bank ask me any questions about the security of my contract or the length of the contract or how long I've ever been out of work or anything like that. They were solely interested in proof of income and obviously my expenses. And other than that, they treated me as if I was any other customer. When I started my first contract more than 22 years ago, contract as an employment method was new and pretty novel. But now it's mainstream and standard. And I don't think you have any problem with any company when applying for credit or any services as a contractor. I am the Aussie IT contractor and I thank you for watching.